Methyl salicylate, also known as wintergreen, is a naturally occurring oil with a really strong minty odor. It can be found in a lot of different plant species, and it's often extracted as an essential oil. Commercially, it's mostly used as a flavoring agent in candy, or in cream products like Bengay to relieve muscle and joint pain. To make the wintergreen, the easiest thing to start with is aspirin because its structure is really similar. They're both derived from the salicylic acid molecule, and they've just been esterified in different places. To make the conversion, I need to make an ester out of the carboxylic acid group marked in red, and I need to destroy the other one. Luckily for me, this is quite easy to do, and both reactions can be done in a single step. By doing the reactions at the same time, the reaction isn't as efficient, but it's still worth it because it saves a lot of time and materials. In terms of the supplies and chemicals, I'm going to be using 50 extra strength aspirin pills, methanol, and concentrated sulfuric acid. Because this is edible chem and I want to taste the wintergreen that I make, I use only high grade ACS chemicals and solvents to make sure that I don't have any weird things dissolved into them. However, considering I'm only going to be tasting a very, very small amount, even if there is something in there, it's really not a big deal. Anyway, to get things started, I need to powderize all of the pills, and to do this I use a coffee grinder. Of course I could have also just smashed them with a hammer or something, but it's just a lot easier this way. When it's done, I take off the lid, and you can see a whole bunch of powder shoot out. It's important to avoid breathing this, because it's really not healthy for your lungs. I pour it out, and then I manually scrape off any powder that might be stuck inside, and add it to the pile. All of the powder is poured into a beaker, and on top of it, I dump in 190 milliliters of methanol. I turn on the stirring, and I let it mix for about an hour. What I'm trying to do here is dissolve all of the aspirin, and leave behind the binders and the other junk that they include in the pills. Unfortunately, the dye that was used to brand the pills is also soluble in methanol, so the solution takes on a very slight pink color. Anyway, at this point it's done, and I just need to filter off this insoluble stuff. It's pretty easy to do this, and I just quickly pass it through a coffee filter. Some of the particles are too small for the filter to catch, so the liquid that passes through is a little bit cloudy. This really isn't a problem though, and it's not going to affect the reaction. After everything passes through, the beaker and the filter are both washed with a little bit of methanol. Then the filter is taken away, and I turn on some really strong stirring. I start to add the concentrated sulfuric acid, and it's very important to do this slowly and carefully. Adding it generates a lot of heat, and it actually causes some of the methanol to boil. I'm stirring things here magnetically, but it's definitely possible to do it manually, you just have to add it a lot slower and be a lot more careful. When I finish adding everything, I connect a cold water condenser. I heat up the methanol using the hot plate, and the goal now is to keep it boiling for about 60 minutes. Any methanol vapor that escapes the flask will be caught by the condenser and dripped back in. As I mentioned in the intro, there are two reactions going on here. One's known as a Fischer esterification, where methanol reacts with the carboxylic acid to form an ester. The other one is a transesterification, where the methanol forms an ester with the acetyl group and replaces the salicylic acid. Overall, if both these reactions are done to the same aspirin molecule, it will generate our desired winter green. One important thing to notice about this reaction, though, is that it's an equilibrium. This means that the products can react together to reform the starting materials. To try to favor the products, though, I include a large excess of methanol. With so much methanol around, the forward reaction should be statistically more likely to happen. However, the overall efficiency of this process still isn't very high. The one hour reflux is eventually done, so I take away the hot plate and let it cool a little bit. Then, when it looks like it stopped refluxing, I take away the condenser. Everything's dumped into a beaker, and now I have to boil off about 50% of the volume. I put it on a medium heat, and I set up a fan off-screen, which really speeds things up. 
When it hits around 100 milliliters, I take it off the hot plate. While still hot, it's transferred to a separatory funnel that has 100 milliliters of ice cold water in it. The moment it's added, a lot of white precipitate falls out of solution, and this is just unreacted starting material. The wintergreen also separates out and sinks to the bottom, but you can't really see it here. To really mix things around, the separatory funnel is capped and shaken, and then it's put back on the stand and I wait for the layers to separate. I come back about 20 minutes later, and it's kind of hard to see here, but there is a lower layer that has formed. So this lower portion is drained into a small beaker, and the rest is dumped off as waste. The separatory funnel is washed, and the crude winter green is re-added. To get rid of any acid that might remain, I wash it with some saturated sodium bicarbonate solution. To really mix it up, I cap the funnel, shake it, and vent it, but I have to be really careful because a lot of CO2 is being generated. I wait for about 30 minutes for the layers to separate, then I drain off the lower one and I repeat this same washing one last time. Again I wait for the layers to separate, and then the lower one is drained into a vial. It's very cloudy and wet with water, so to dry it up, I add some molecular sieves. It's also possible to use another drying agent, like magnesium sulfate. I swirled it around a little bit, but it was still a little bit cloudy, so I left it for a couple hours. The wintergreen cleared up quite a bit, but there was still some solid stuff floating around. So to get rid of it, I filtered it through some cotton and sea light. If no sea light's available, it can be replaced with a little bit of magnesium sulfate. The stuff that filters through is crystal clear, but it's tainted slightly yellow. The yellow color, as well as some other impurities, can be removed by distillation, but I decided not to do one. Because I'm just planning to taste it, I don't need it to be super pure, and it's okay how it is. The final yield is 4.85 grams, which corresponds to a very low percent yield of only 24%. If you recall, for this prep I did two reactions in one shot, but I think if I did them separately, the yield would have been closer to 70%. However, it's a lot more work, so the decision is really to get a better yield, or to save on time. Anyway, now it's time to taste it. Before I do this though, I need to give a warning. When wintergreen is ingested, it's metabolized to salicylic acid, just like aspirin. What I have here is equivalent to about 18 doses of regular strength aspirin, so it's important to be careful and not eat too much. With that warning in place though, we can move on to the fun part. I'm going to be tasting it directly, even though it's going to be super strong and it's not going to taste very good at all, but I figure that it might be funny to try. So here I have a syringe, and I'm going to measure out about half a milliliter, which is the equivalent of two regular strength aspirin tablets. So let's test this out. It's actually quite a bit. So. Oh. I mean... It's really minty. It gets mintier and mintier the longer it's in my mouth. I mean, it's kind of dissipating right now. At first it was pretty uncomfortable. It actually tasted pretty decent. I thought half a mil was going to taste really, really bad. It actually just, I don't know, it wasn't that bad at all. Anyway, I'm going to be doing something useful with it now instead of just eating it plain. And I've decided to make some mint candies, which is surprisingly easy to do. To make them, all they need is some gum paste, which is sold as both a powder that needs to be mixed with water, or as a pre-made paste. I went with the pre-made one, which is more expensive, but it saves a lot of time and annoyance. The gum paste is basically just a combination of sugar and sodium alginate. When it's wet, the sodium alginate picks up the water, and it forms a gel. This holds everything together, and lets it be molded like Play-Doh. At room temperature, it's pretty thick and tough, so you need to mash it around with your hands a little to warm it up and soften it. When it feels soft enough, I start to add the wintergreen. I add only a little bit each time, and then I thoroughly mix it in. 
The goal here is to just keep adding it and occasionally tasting it until I get to the mintiness that I want. Then I lay out some wax paper, sprinkle on some powdered sugar, and flatten out the paste until I get to the thickness that I want the mints to be. Now there are a lot of options. In theory, you could just leave it like this and have one large mint, you can cut it up like I did, or you can cut out shapes. I'm a big fan of the lazy route and just cutting it up using a knife, but you can do whatever you want. Anyway, while I'm cutting things up here, I feel it's a good time to mention that using wintergreen alone for mints is not the best idea. Wintergreen alone doesn't have the strongest mint flavor, and it wears off pretty quickly. To make up for this, I added everything that I had into these mints, but that's kind of dangerous. This really isn't a big batch, and it wouldn't be crazy for someone to eat them all in one shot, and this can be potentially fatal, especially for children. It's totally possible that I'm doing things completely wrong here, but in my opinion, wintergreen should be only added as a flavor and not as the main source of mintiness. If you want really minty stuff, you're going to have to add something else. Anyway, when I'm done cutting them, they need to be hardened, which is done by just letting them sit out to dry. After a few days, they were much harder, but the inside was still a little bit soft. I think to fully harden them, I'd have to leave them for about a week, or I could just make them thinner. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought of it, and maybe some topics you'd like to see me cover in the future. So I'd really like to hear what you guys have to say, and I mean, I guess that's about it. A big thanks goes out to all of my supporters on Patreon. Anyone who supports me will see my videos 24 hours before I post it to YouTube, and they'll also be able to directly contact me. Anyone who supports me with $5 or more will also get their name at the end of the video like you see here.